everyone. Today's Monday, April 6th. Get your coffee, and we're going to have a little coffee chat today. Sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, well, I'll be back to my 10 o'clock videos um, tomorrow. So I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I did. Saturday was the most gorgeous day, so I was able to get out into my yard a little bit and um, did a little bit of work in my gardens and sat out and read and enjoyed um, the, nice, uh, the nice sunshine. It felt wonderful. And Sunday, with the kind of gloomy, rainy day at first, I just had a kind of a PJ morning, and uh, so watched some movies and relaxed. And then in the afternoon, I did some painting on my paint by number. I hadn't done very much during the week, so there's a little bit of progress from last week, but not a whole lot. But it's starting to take shape. So here's what I have now. You can kind of see the outline of the chair and the tree, so it's coming along. So that was my pretty much my weekend, and so I hope you had a nice one as well. well I also finished my car, my my pictures for to send to the promenade. So I colored in the two uh, how to draw bunnies. So I did this one with a Happy Easter and the more cartoon one, which Monsieur Seguin said looks like an alien. But anyways, happy Easter. And so I've sent both of those off to Promenade for, um, so that they can have a little uh, Easter cheer. And thank you to Harmony, who did a few pictures and uh, who sent them along as well. And I also got a video from Harmony, and she wrote a go her goose story last week. And so she sent me a video of her um, reading her story and showing me the pictures. So that was great. Thank you, Harmony, for that. Um, Moms and dads, if the story, if your video, if you want to send me a video and they're a little bit too long, you can always put them in your child's Google Drive. So if they go onto their school email, um, and if you're having trouble with that, just send me an, um, an email and I can walk you through how to access your child's Google Drive, your the school Google Drive. Then I can just go right into their Google Drive and see anything that's in there. Um, I also got a nice message from Sam. Uh, he's been working hard and listening to all our videos. So hi, Sam. Nice, uh, nice that you're doing that. And he he did uh, a couple of pictures as well. And then his mom sent them to me. So keep those coming. I love to get your emails and your hellos and your messages and see some of your work. So there we go. So we're just going to get right started with our activity for today. So this is the week before Easter. And um, if you've been in my class before, you know that we always do Benjamin's box. But I thought before we even started that, that we'll start with a prayer like we normally do at school. So I'm gonna just turn the computer around and hopefully you'll see this. Here we go. Let me adjust. I think that's good. Let me see. Okay, so here we go. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I am a child of God. He has sent me here, given me a home with parents kind and dear. Lead me, guide me, walk beside me, help me find the way, teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm just going to flip to the next page, and I thought it might be fun today to sing our This Little Light of Mine song. If I can get it to the next page, that would be awesome. Oh, no, not that one. Let's go backwards. No. Let's go this way. There we go. Here we go. Sing it loud and proud. Let it 
back to the top. Great start for our week, our short week, only four days this week. Friday is a good Friday. So I'm going to start with Benjamin's box. And you might remember this from last year, if you were in my class last year. But like all good books, they are worth rereading and rereading, especially those that are specific for a certain time of year. It's kind of nice. It's like singing Jingle Bells. Just because we sang it one year at Christmas doesn't mean we're not going to sing it the next year if it's something we really like. And Benjamin's box has an awesome, awesome message. So I like to read it every year. So Benjamin's box. There's a bit of a glare. I'm gonna try and turn this around a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show the picture. You don't need to see it. So Benjamin. Long ago in the faraway land of Palestine, there lived a boy named Benjamin. His small, humble home was nestled, nestled means tuck, tucked in, nestled into a wall of other houses, almost hidden on a narrow back street in the bustling, bustling means busy, city of Jerusalem. Benjamin loved Jerusalem because God's temple was there. More than that, Benjamin loved God. His grandfather had taught him many things about God when he was just a tiny baby. Benjamin talked to God a lot. He whispered prayers each night at sunset, and in the morning he always gave thanks for the new day. Benjamin's parents worked hard weaving and selling cloth, but their family was still quite poor. So Benjamin helped out by taking odd jobs around the city. Everyone in Jerusalem seemed to know Benjamin. They could always count on him to be honest and to work hard. So odd jobs are little things like maybe sweeping, delivering things, washing stuff up, uh, putting things away. So a bunch of little jobs. Benjamin's not that old if you look at his picture. He's maybe nine or ten, I'm, I'm guessing. The box. There's quite a bit of glare here. I'm trying to, there we go. The box. One bright spring morning, Benjamin sat outside in the sunshine. In his hands was a wooden box. And I have a wooden box here that's kind of like the one that Benjamin's holding. Hi, Benjamin, called his friend Eli. What's that you've got? It's my treasure box, said Benjamin. My grandfather gave it to me before he died last year. He said it was very, very special. Eli opened it and looked in. There's nothing in it except for some old straw. How can this be a treasure box? Benjamin shrugged. That's when you put your shoulders up and down and like, I don't know. I don't have any real treasures yet, but my grandfather said that this straw came from the bed of a baby who was born in a stable. My grandfather was a shepherd then, and he said the baby would grow up to be a king. Hmm, a baby born in a stable. He would grow up to be a king. His grandpa was a shepherd. Who do you think that baby was? Why would a king be born in a stable with cows and donkeys? Eli laughed and closed the box. I heard some sort of king is coming today. His name is Jesus. Want to come to the city gate and watch for him? Sure, 
My grandfather took me to hear a man called Jesus once. I liked to listen to him. So if we look in my box, let me open it up. And I have some straw here, well, some pretend straw, just like the straw that's in Benjamin's box. But Benjamin's straw is real straw. And it's straw from the stable where a baby was born. I bet you know who that baby was. Turn the page. You see each page has a colored egg. And I have the same color eggs over here to match. And we're going to look at them when I finish the page. The donkey. So each page has a title. The donkey. Crowds were already lining the street. Some people cut palm branches from trees and handed them around. Others laid garments, that's like cloth or clothes, on the street like a carpet. Wow, said Benjamin, he must be a king. The two boys squeezed through the crowd just as the donkey entered the gate. That's him, Benjamin pointed to the man on the donkey. That's Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, cheered the crowd as they waved their palm branches in the air. So they were sort of lined up on each side of the street the way you would be at a parade, maybe like at the Christmas parade, and then there's all the floats come through the middle. So that's how it was with Jesus. The crowds were on each side. They were waving and cheering. Why does a king ride an ordinary donkey, said Benjamin. The old man turned. It means he comes in peace. So he's not a king that wants rich, to be rich and to have fancy things. He's just like a regular person and he just wants to be with the people. Jesus had come to set us free. Hail King Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus's face as he drew near. Jesus smiled back as if they were friends. The donkey plodded and Benjamin followed pushing through the crowds to keep up. At last, he drew close enough to pet the donkey. A small tuft of hair came off in his hand. That night, Benjamin placed the bit of donkey fur in his treasure box. So I'm going to go to my blue egg. So I have a carton of eggs here. When you have the whole box of eggs, it's called a carton. So I have a carton of eggs, and I'm going to go to the blue one, just like the, pic just like the page. I'm going to open it up, and in the blue egg is a donkey. And that's to help us remember the part when Jesus came to Jerusalem on a donkey, and everyone was happy and waving and cheering. So we're going to put the donkey in the treasure box to help us remember that part. All right, let's do another egg. We're going to do three eggs today. So there's a picture. And I'm going to read the coin. In the next days, Benjamin and Eli went to hear Jesus whenever they could. One day, as they waited, Eli whispered, The priests have offered money for someone to betray Jesus. Why? asked Benjamin. What has he done? He only speaks the truth. They should listen to him. The priests are jealous of him. They want Jesus to stop teaching, said Eli. Well, someone should warn Jesus. So what's happening is the king and the people who work for the king are jealous. They don't want everyone to love Jesus and to think that Jesus is their king and not to listen to them anymore. And they're scared Jesus is going to take all of their money. So they're, they're paying people if you tell us where Jesus is, if you tell us what he said, we'll give you money. So they're trying to get people to tell on Jesus by giving them money. Someone should warn Jesus, declared Benjamin. I'm not afraid. I'll go. He pushed through the crowd until he reached one of Jesus' friends. He tugged, that means to push, pull, on the man's sleeve. Excuse me, sir, are you with Jesus? Yes, I am, the man answered. Please, I need to warn Jesus. He's in danger. The king is offering a, offering a bribe to betray him. 
So, so a bribe is giving money for someone to tell on Jesus. You must tell him. Shh, said the man. Do not repeat this. I'll take care of it. And as he slipped a coin into Benjamin's hand. So he's giving Benjamin money and he's saying, shh, don't talk about it. I'll, I'll look after Jesus. Don't tell anyone. Thank you, kind sir. What is your name? Judas, said the man as he turned away. That night, Benjamin tucked the shiny coin into his treasure box. So here we have a pink egg. So I'm going to go to the pink egg. Let's see what's in the pink egg. So in the pink egg are some pretend coins. And Jesus... and. Uh, Benjamin didn't spend those or buy anything with them. He put them in his treasure box to help him remember the day that he helped Jesus by telling Jesus' friend that he was in danger. So I'm going to put the coins in the box and we'll do our last egg for today. There's the picture. And there's Benjamin with a pitcher of water jug of water. Here we go. The cup. The next day, Benjamin was asked to help his aunt get ready for an unexpected guest. They would be coming for Passover dinner. He went right to work carrying water jugs. So his aunt had like a little restaurant and she's having special guests and she asked Benjamin to help. Did you hear the guest of honor is Jesus, said a servant girl. Benjamin's eyes opened wide. Imagine to serve such an important man. He must work hard and do his very best. Two of Jesus' friends came to help, and Benjamin listened as they talked of Jesus. They loved him so much. Soon Jesus arrived, and the supper began. If Benjamin listened carefully, he could hear some of their words. But what did Jesus mean when he said the wine was like his blood and would be spilled, and the bread was to be broken like his body? It made no sense. Then Jesus said someone would betray him. Someone's going to tell on him. Benjamin smiled. He wasn't worried. He knew that Judas would prevent this, would stop it, would, would protect Jesus. After supper, Benjamin found a broken cup. He saved it to remember the night when he served Jesus. So here we have a light purple violet color egg. So I'm going to go look at that. So here it is right here. And we're going to open it up. And here we have a cup. Remember Benjamin picked up a broken cup. And so he brought it home, and he didn't throw it in the garbage. He put it in his treasure box to help him remember the night where he got to serve Jesus. He was right at the restaurant serving Jesus. Here's the treasure box, and we're going to put the cup in it like that. So Jesus was talking to his friends and saying, this blood is, this wine, which is red, is like the blood that's going to come out of my body, and this bread that I'm, I'm cutting in half to share is like my body my bones that are going to break and Benjamin didn't really understand and I don't think Jesus's friends really understood either what Jesus was talking about but we kind of know because we know what the story of Easter how that goes that Jesus is going to die and he was warning them and and, and telling them um, about what was going to happen because God had already told Jesus and Jesus knew the whole thing and he accepted what was going to happen so we're going to stop there, and tomorrow we'll continue on. But I do have a little task for you. This is what we were going to do at school, so you might want to do it like this at home. Um, so I have a large piece of paper, and I cut it in the shape of an egg, because it's an Easter story. And on the other side, I put lines. I don't know if you can see those. And what we were going to do is do a diary entry every time we read the book. Now, a diary is, some, is, a, is a little journal, is a book that people write in, and they write their personal ideas, their personal thoughts. Usually it's their, something that's happened, and more importantly, what their feelings are about it. So you're going to pretend that you are Benjamin, and you're going to write what 
happened to you so far in the story. And I want you to talk about how you feel about it. So if I was doing a diary entry, a journal about my weekend, I might write, um, on Saturday the weather was beautiful, so I sat outside in the sun and read my book. It felt so nice to be out in the warm sunshine with my shorts on. It made me feel very happy and relaxed. So you don't just say what happened, but you have to add how you feel about it. So you're going to be saying I, you're not going to say Benjamin, you're going to say I because you're pretending you're Benjamin and you're trying to imagine what the different parts would have felt like. So if we did, if you talked about the donkey part, okay, we'll do this one together and then you'll do the others on your own. So you're going to have uh, one, two, three things to talk about. So if the donkey, and just a sentence or two, it doesn't have to be really long. So you could say something like, today I got to see Jesus arrive in Jerusalem on a donkey. Everyone was happy and cheering for him. I felt very happy and excited to be able to see Jesus. So remember, it's not just happy, sad. It might be excited, frustrated, angry, um, honored. So try and think of different words for the feelings besides just happy and sad. And then you're going to write about hearing, giving, mon getting money from Judas. Today, I told Jesus' friend Judas that he was in danger. He gave me money. And then you're going, and don't forget the feelings. And you're going to talk about getting to serve Jesus. Maybe your feelings here might have been confused. You didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. Or maybe you felt so special and honored to serve Jesus. So you say what happened and you always say I because you're pretending you are Benjamin I got to serve Jesus I told Judas that Jesus was in danger I saw Jesus coming to Jerusalem and make sure you add your feelings so you can do that on an egg with lines or just on a regular piece of paper. If some of you are working in your Google Docs in your yellow language class folder on the computer, you can type it out if you want. You can go find pictures of a donkey or coins or a treasure box or whatever. So you can do that as well. If you're doing it on that, I can easily see your work. So that would be kind of cool. So we're going to stop there. I just have one more. I sent your parents an email today so you can ask them if they got my email with a whole bunch of uh, word wall words, the leftover words that we haven't done yet and with some ideas on how to work with those with you. And I also sent them an idea for a following directions game. You know how we've been working on right and left. And um, so I thought because it's almost Easter that you could do kind of like a treasure hunt. So you could hide a real egg, a plastic egg, a chocolate egg, a toy, a stuffy, it really doesn't matter what you're hiding. And so you only need two people to play this. You can have more, but at least two. So you can hide something. And then the person you're working with, you have to direct them. They don't know where it is. Without walking and pointing and showing them, you have to just use your words and say, okay, take, go straight for five steps. Turn right, take two steps, walk to the couch, turn left, look up, look down. So you're going to use your words to give instructions to try and lead them to the object. Once they find it, then you switch. They get to hide something and give the directions and you have to follow and try to go find the hidden object. So I thought that might be a fun way this week to practice your right and your left. Practice giving really specific directions. And uh, if you don't understand the person's directions, to ask for clarification, to ask questions. Do you mean this way or that way? Do you mean over, did I go too far? Do I need, so you can ask questions if you're not sure what they mean. 
So I put that in your parents' email as well as a little game to play this week in the house or outside even in your yard. Um, so today your task is to write about the three pages for Benjamin, what happened to you today, and uh, have your parents look at their email with uh, all the new ideas for the week. So I hope you all have a great day. The sun is shining. I'm hoping to get outside for a little bit this afternoon and work in my gardens again. And we'll see everyone tomorrow at our regular time. I should be posting around 10 tomorrow. So cheers. Have a great day, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye.